Yeah, I don't know um, uh, if what's going on with the meetings. I just uh, sent a ping to to the leads to the to the tag leads, just being like, "Hey, what's up with the the meeting invites?" Um, it's confusing on figuring out what time is this stuff all supposed to happen, and I don't think we ever we said we need to sort it out. We never sorted it out. So, yep. And I think it's also it's a weird timing too because I think we're kind of wrapping up the project, so it's hard to readjust yeah that. yeah <laughs> yeah at, at least this uh part of it i believe the next sort of step is to turn it a into a living document and b i think the thing was start writing some code around seeing how we can you know support all the various use cases and whatever and, and kind of create that you know prototype implementation which you know brendan myself and some other folks have, have been doing as as well but um you know Obviously, it's it's only based on what we know and what, what we're familiar with. So if there's folks who are saying like, "Hey, it would be great if we looked at Jenkins X or looked at this thing or that thing," you know, I think that'd be um, useful as well. But yeah, I'm I'm seeing if if uh, uh, Brendan Lum or uh, um, uh, or Andres or anybody else is uh, joining. Pop uh, said he's he has to take off. Um, he has a bit of a family thing, so he's not going to be around either. Right. Give it another minute or two for folks to join also, as it is a, a holiday in the US, so I know some folks might not be on either. I think that only counts for your banker. Yeah. Oh, fair, fair. Yeah, but, which, I mean, I'm supposed to have off, but I'm in open source meetings all day. Um, all right. Okay, I guess uh, we can probably get started as people roll in, they'll roll in. Um, so just as a reminder, uh, this meeting is recorded and will be um, uploaded to YouTube. Uh, uh, at some point after after the meeting, um, and that also your participation here is uh, you know um, must abide by the CNCF's uh, code of conduct. All right. Yeah, I'll, I'll quickly observe that uh, a number of U.S. folks will will be not here because it is a holiday. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm largely off, other than uh, a few other uh, meetings. I'm here. <laughs> but, hey. Yeah, yeah. Um, so just a couple of, uh, so let me, I'll post the, the working group um, notes and we can get going here. And I will just start to add those things to it. Uh, so if there's, All right, um, and we can talk about the discussion as well. Um, so updates are, there is a ticket with the CNCF on getting technical writers to start looking through the document, uh, cleaning up typos, uh, making some of the language a little bit more consistent and so on. Um, Andres and some of those folks have uh, a lot more information and insight onto to that. Uh, and so I believe in uh, the next couple of weeks, at least from the last update from Andres, uh, oh, there he is. He can probably talk to it a little bit more um, than I can, but I know that we have a ticket open to sort of uh, get them to start cleaning up the doc and generate a, um, a PDF for, uh, for, a community um, comment. And uh, yeah, um, Andres, do you have anything on that front to to add on? Not a whole lot. They've acknowledged they picked it up and they're working on it. Um, they asked like for a general sense of timeline. Uh, I express we'd like to have something back two weeks from Monday, which is when we last touched base with them. So yeah, they're working on it and we should have something approximately two weeks from now. Just 
just put that in the uh, for the folks who are just joining again. Uh, here's the Google Doc. Um, feel free to put your attendance and in, in, um, anything on there. So uh, as far as oh, um, as far as um, obviously, I think as we mentioned the last few weeks, you know, largely the the content of the doc is is finished. Um, at this point, it's just uh, you know opening it up for community review and those sorts of things. Um, and then, uh, <clears throat> based on you know some of the previous conversations over the past few weeks, the idea was um, you know if possible uh, after you know this first version of it to make it a bit of a living document because we sort of all acknowledge that uh, the supply chain security space is changing not just on uh, you know very very fast where like some of the things that you know weren't true yesterday are now true today or vice versa um, and things that were just completely missing in the community, you know, are, are coming up pretty fast. Uh, so it'll probably become something like a living document. And then um, some of the other stuff was, you know, uh, next steps around a prototype implementation or that sort of thing. Um, but yeah, um, beyond that, I, I don't think there was really much in the way of uh, updates. Does anybody else have any sort of updates um, on any of these things? I know that the, the you know, I, beyond the doc, I guess. Just the one last thing on the doc, you, you might have questions is why wouldn't we just make the doc as is available for public comment? And the thinking is, so, so we get quality feedback and not like, hey, you have a typo here or you missed a space here. So we have professional proofreaders, editors clean it up for us and that we can that way present it, get structure feedback against the, the content and let's say the substance of the doc more less so about the the format the writing the grammar etc yeah that's that's the thinking there cool anybody else any other sort of uh any other updates in, in the sort of supply chain security space? I feel like there's always something breaking in the supply chain security space, but I was just checking in because I hadn't been here for a few weeks and making sure there wasn't anything you needed help with. Yeah, as far as the doc is concerned, I don't think so. Um, I know probably after the doc goes out, uh, we're gonna start talking a bit more about you know, next steps and, and those sorts of things for, for the group. Um, Cause obviously there's still a whole lot of work that could still be done in the space. Um, I know that, you know, most folks are aware of, Hey, like uh, Brendan, myself, and a few other folks who have been doing some stuff on city had kind of, you know, taken what was already in the draft for the um, reference architecture and started to build out a prototype implementation sort of built on top of a lot of the demos that like, um, uh, Priya had given, Dan Lorenz had given some other folks um, and sort of like kind of taking all the pieces and putting everything together into something like, you know, Tecton plus Chains plus Kyverno plus the, you know, all those things. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I don't know, Andres, like what the, uh, what the thing there is if we wanted to say, hey, look, how can we make something like that into a official CNCF project underneath the CNCF or a repo that lives underneath the, the security tag or something like that? Yeah. Brandon Lum and I had a, a series of conversations about it yesterday. I think it's it's still an ongoing discussion. We we want to do several things. From, from this group, right? Number one, we, we probably want to qualify whether this code constitutes the initial part of a reference implementation, like the third, third stage of, of this work stream, or if it's, if it's some examples and, and companion code to the reference architecture, but not quite the, the implementation yet. And it's more just references. 
now uh thinking of well what's what's the best way to protect this code from well make making sure that it can be sustained making sure that the authors and contributors can continue to evolve it and that it is protected from like copyright it is protected from from licensing issues um and we haven't quite yet arrived at that there's like different arguments of uh well if if we just host it on well there's two concerns one, one concern stems from tax security is attempting to organize a lot a lot of the content it produces from a microsite so there's a desire to consolidate everything and have it lift on let have it, all content and artifacts produced from tax security efforts be on their cncf slash slash tax security now as that starts to grow in into a project which like any open source project and it has the semblance that that it might uh the toc might come around and say hey why why did you kind of like wedge it into a, a sig uh you need to put this through due diligence and formal of intake for new projects so it can be sa sanctioned as such and that could turn out into a lot of back and forth and i presume over time that gets sorted out but it's just is a little of, of a toothache if, if one we can anticipate if like we all sign off hey we we want to we want to have an earnest shot are we going to get give this an earnest shot to grow as a project Let's start it off as a project. Let let's make sure like you have a good skeleton right now. Let's let's go over the governance. Uh, let's make uh, those of the authors who are interested and can commit to maintaining this code over the foreseeable future. Uh, let's do that. Let's dot all the i's, cross all the t's, to prepare to to submit this for intake, if that's the decision of of the group or host it under somewhere else um, in order for like conflict mediation and like avoiding avoiding any sort of issues do we want to have a steering committee uh, given that it's actually born as a as a effort of cncf tag maybe a good middle ground is like well we're, we're hosting this this software factory organization we started an ssf repo and uh, add the Linux Foundation as the Linux Foundation GitHub account as a member that has admin rights to that repository, which is pretty much what happens once once is a CNCF hosted project. Uh, they they don't get involved in to, in the like administrative tasks of uh, managing and. A GitHub organization or a GitHub repository. The only thing that they ask is uh, that they have admin rights should any conflict ever arise from from other administrators. So we could do that from like uh, we can do it do this right now. Add them and give them the heads up as we like clean things up and get them up to shape. But all of this is recognizing that we all only have so much attention bandwidth. And we're working on, on a number of things like it's going to take some like undivided attention to to produce something that meets the bar uh and it's really structured and, and organized and yeah we we should probably figure out realistically what would be the timeline to do that over do we want to take like a breather and make this all part of the reference implementation so i'll pause there I've said a lot. Yeah, that 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 all makes sense. And if there's anything from my end um, that that you need any help with, I'm definitely around to to sort of uh, help with that uh, as well. Uh, from our end, right? Like you know, for for my end, 
um, you know, one of the goals I have in sort of um, contributing to this thing, right, is is we want to get the community aligned to at least a, a like folks relatively along a certain path. You know, nobody, we don't have to all sort of do the same exact stuff, but um, by showing some sort of canonical examples and getting folks to sort of, you know, view this as like, oh, this, this is a way that we can sort of build, um, uh, you know, artifacts with, with a high level of sort of, you know, authenticity, integrity, and so on. Um, it, it helps out with the sort of broader goals of, you know, how do we, uh, how does a company, you know, or how does anybody start to uh, make sense of their supply chain? And so if you start to sort of say, hey, here's a, a, a set of, here's a architectural pattern, and then I reference implementation of that, that pattern um, that shows how you build artifacts the right way, um, then, you know, that helps out, like, because uh, to take a step back, I think one of the things that has been discussed also at some of the salsa meetings is, you know, they're looking for stuff like this, right, as a way of saying, oh, if you build your artifacts like this, you know, and you start generating those attestations, then we can all start to get on the same page with, you know, the level of quality of our, you know, the artifacts we're building, especially in the um, open source supply chain space. So what I'm hearing is we want shortest path to have this publicly referenceable and pub publicly consumable with like the least bureaucracy, ideally. Or are we willing like to pay down like a lot of thought and consideration to the bureaucracy up front to make sure that the things are tight and we never have to worry about that at any point later? I guess my, my two cents is just, even if we could do it in parallel, right? Like I have no problem with the, you know, working at a bank uh, with bureaucracy, um, but, uh, you know, I think the thing is just, will the bureaucracy block us from still continuing the work until it's over, right? Like if, if it's something like, hey, as soon as we start this process, we have to sort of lock it for a few months while mm -hmm. everything gets sorted out, that's going to be, I think, an issue. I think you all know my take on this. It's, it's I think I think we need to get something out there, and it, and I totally agree in, in terms of the parallel aspect of you know kind of dotting the eyes and crossing the t's. I know where Andres is coming from as well, right? We should we should have that level of kind of you know not governance, but I, maybe that is what we're calling it here, to be able to like um, you know have more people get involved and 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 steer this as necessary. But again, I'm my, I'm of the mind that I don't want to stop our momentum right now, and you know, and maybe I'm kind of, you know, just being the gung-ho person I am. Yep, I agreed too, right? Like, I, I, we want to make sure um, uh, from my end, right? Like, yeah, we want governance around this thing, especially, right? It, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's a eating our own dog food thing, right? Like where we, in this, in the reference architecture, we have cited all these different things that we want to do. And if we don't, um, if we don't start applying our own policies, like for example, around you know two-person code review and those sorts of things, we look like you know clowns. Well, yeah. and we've also talked about this ad nauseum in terms of like this is the first iteration, right? And like oh. it, these these processes in general, as we all know, are still in flux and they're growing. And that, you know, yeah. until you know, so this is our kind of again this line in the sand. And Steve, I, I see you have a comment in in the, in the channel. Maybe if you want to kind of talk through that, so that we're all kind of on the same page. I'd love to hear from you, but. Yeah, I just, I, you know, bureaucracy. I, you know, I, I get it. You know, there's it's always a challenge, especially in large groups. It, so I. I'm hoping that isn't really as much the problem as opposed to, you know, are we building something that has a security model we believe in? Like, and I'm not, you know, I'm not even making points about hacks to learn. Like we have, we always want to put things in place just to learn. And then if we like that pattern, we can go back and reinforce it. Um, but I, I, that I, you know, and that it means getting something out quick and learning. Yeah. But I think there's a sure. concern around how much, is being put into something and are we really capturing the end end requirements of what we're trying to achieve and identifying the weak spots, what we learned, we want to go fix as opposed to let's get something, call it done and think that this is, you know, 
the hacks are these. Yeah, I don't think we've ever that's, said that's though. The one one thing I'll say here is I don't think we've ever said that this is done. It's always we said it's our kind of the take as of this point. I totally agree with you. Totally agree with you. It's like yeah, yeah. You know, we can't say this is the definitive you know software supply chain guide for everybody. We just have to say this is kind of the first V V1 uh, aspect of this. Sorry, Andres, I cut you off. Go ahead, bud. You're gonna say yeah, something. That's 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 fine. That's that's insightful. To be clear, we have made the decision that that we're calling it done for the time being. Uh, to be clear, there's no there's no actual problem. All that we need is to make a decision, which in part we've made of we want to move fast. We're starting our own project. Any any set of individuals who work in an open forum can, on their own accord, start an open source project and host it on GitHub. That's what we're doing. The the only points of I, I don't even want to use the word contention because it's not it's not contention is where where we we want to make sure we we proceed is by the time CNCF comes back and says hey, you have your pretty looking PDF ready for comment. Does the link there point to code examples on the CNCF tax security repository or does it point to the GitHub organization or repository we, we've started for this thing? And if so, uh, well, how is, is that an independent open source project? Is it part of a foundation? Um, like Pop, you, you know this from Falco, intake and moving through the motions is hard. Steve, you, you know this from, from many steering committees and different uh, bodies that there's there's bureaucracy to, to pay up front. And it's, it's good bureaucracy, right? You, you want to make sure that you want to be somewhat loyally and judicious to make sure that, that things are set up in, in a way that people can can come in and and collaborate and that there's like not a whole lot left to interpretation of what are the processes and procedures but writing those processes and procedures takes takes time right and you can get away with having that be somewhat lighter weight than than is with some bodies is is that aspect part of this working group right i, I don't want to scope creep what the aspects of this group are to do right the aspects of this group are just to create that first iteration of the doc right and then i totally agree with you again 100 percent agree with you we just have to figure out like what in what context are we you know is this going to be a specific project after the once we get this iteration out there and this being the impetus for that that's something i think we should probably talk offline about andres to be honest with you just just being transparent because I know exactly where you're coming from about it. Yeah. Yeah. And again, is is this things that yeah, I, I don't think it's it's behind the scenes. It's all these other concerns that well, we, we all work in open source here that we know come come with the territory, right? And it's things that we we should be thinking about and working on. Uh, there's there's a lot of prior art and things we can reference to make this. It, there's not a whole lot of writing. It's just deciding. Hey, how are we going to license this thing? Uh, how how are we going to set up governance for it? So it's in a, in a direction that people can just think about the actual interesting things and not this boring stuff. It looks like you have another question, but. I just, I, I hear us being a little abstract and dancing around whatever the elephant in the room is. I'm not even sure what it is, but I, just in the sense of governance and some of the other stuff, I I can tell you getting that stuff buttoned up early is something you probably want to do. It, it threw us off for about six months with the notary stuff um, because we were just trying to execute and we left some pieces open and it really caused a lot of problems. So I would, I'm not exactly sure what you guys are referencing to, but if there's something around, I hear bureaucracy, I think of governance and some other stuff, but there's some pieces there to just wrap up. Um, I think we're talking about our own individual projects that we've all worked on to, you know, like Andres with Spiffy and, and all the other things he's done in his career, me with Falco, that kind of thing. So it's, it's making sure that we set ourselves up for success as we're doing here. Um, but also the train is already in motion to a certain degree, like largely in motion. So and, and the, again, the task of this group, and please 
Michael, Andres, please make sure I'm on, on task here is to ensure we had first iteration of our uh, uh, software supply chain kind of reference architecture, which I believe we're in a good place. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh go ahead. Uh, I'll just I'll just shoot blank, like point blank and ask the question, like, are, are we saying the code we have that Michael and folks produced as the prototype, are we going to call that a prototype? Are we going to call that? There's two options. That's reference code for V1, or this is already part of the stage three reference implementation. That's the biggest thing we need to answer. And I have a follow on question. I'll throw up prototypes are, are good. We should do, you know, prototypes are always going to go validate something, but prototypes are discounted as to anything that could be viewed as useful. So if it is in prototype phase, because you want to come something better, then that's the right label. If you think it's like a stage to a release, then, you know, I would vote for something a little bit more stable draft or, you know, alpha, you know, pre-release something like that is great. Um, I, I did want to just, but I had wanted to build on one thing because Pop, you mentioned something around like each project and I, I, I've actually been at Microsoft for a long time now. It's kind of weird, but it, you know, one of the things we talk about as PMs is you've got to be willing to cut your own feature. Like it's not about passion for a particular thing. It's what is the end goal? And I just, I, I, want, I wonder, worry sometimes, is it about, hey, I want to get my feature out and how do I get it into this thing? Or is it, hey, this really makes sense. And, but now that I'm seeing end to end, I'm learning something and maybe this should change an X, Y, or Z. So um, just, just a question. Yeah, so, so from my perspective, I think there's, there's a couple of different things going on. Um, so the first thing is I think like a problem statement, which is there's a lot of different tools in the supply chain space, whether it comes to how we sign things or how we provide identity or how we provide uh, reasonable CI, you know, like uh, reasonable CI and those sorts of things. Um, and I, I think what, what has happened is like, you know, what was kind of brought up is no one really has, has done a whole lot to sort of tie everything together into something that is kind of like end to end where the, you know, the idea is like, Hey, as long as you have an artifact repository, and as long as you have a source code repository, everything in the middle will, you know, will, will tie everything together for you. Um, and I think that's kind of what the, the purpose of, of this project is, is to kind of say, okay, cool, here is, a, here is essentially CI, CD stuff, plus uh, ways for us to look at the policy and yada, yada and, and, and ways to sort of um, provide standards around the actual pipelines themselves and so on and so forth, so it's such that we're building uh, stuff in a way that we can have certain security, you know, increased confidence around security, authenticity, integrity, that, those kinds of things. So that's the purpose of it. Now, I think there's there's a bunch of things that kind of make this a non-trivial problem. Um, the biggest one I would say is, you know, uh, the features that are coming out of folks like, you know, Notary, folks like Tecton, Chains, uh, Kyverno is, you know, the things around the supply chain space that didn't exist yesterday now exist today. And so we need to kind of keep um, up to date with, with all of those, those things as well. And so that's, that was the purpose of the project is to start to really like start to tie all these things together, figure out where the gaps are today in some of the tools to say, Hey, this, this tool, like as an example, you know, Kyverno didn't have the ability to check for attestations um, a few weeks ago. They now do. Uh, and, and so that was, uh, you know, came out of a lot of the work from groups like ours. And so that, that's one thing. And then the second thing is eventually over time, as things get more stabilized, we can easily sort of say, here is a canonical example, or maybe a full fledged platform or whatever, mm -hmm. uh, that is all these tools combined, um, that that people can use you know probably not it's not going to be an out-of-the-box solution that everybody could just sort of use it. i'm not you know i don't you know whatever but i think it, it, the thing that i keep seeing in the community from like outside of the group you know and outside of the experts is nobody even knows where to get started and i think this is a thing that hey 
this is where you can get started. I think to, to the other points that everybody has brought up is we just need to be very careful in how we, we put it out there and we make sure that folks get, you know, cause I've been asked before, right. Is just, where's the salsa tool? Like, where's the tool that just builds the salsa? And you're like, that, that's not, no, no, hold on, <laughs> take a step back. Um, you know, this is what we're trying to do, you know, and, and so on. And I think we just need to be clear on, on what this actually what this actually is. And, and I agree with, with Steve about, you know, uh, it's very easy to say, Hey, this is a prototype. And then everybody goes, okay. And they ignore it. Um, <laughs> you know, so, so, but with that said, I do think like, at least my goal with writing some of this code is to a show to the community, how it could be done. Um, and B is to also get other folks in the community to start like poking around with this. Like, I don't know if this is going to end up becoming a real thing that people can just sort of mm -hmm. use out of the box. But if folks can just start using and start even identifying the gaps in the supply chain space today, I think that's already um, a pretty good goal. That to me is the focus of our mission here is to get that into folks' hands to be able to say, this is what the, you know, and again, whatever that nomer is, if it's, if it is prototype or whatever, then we've always talked about this iterate, iterative process, right? Well, maybe we'll see other tools that come in or we'll see other things. Oh yeah, you know, I've kind of implemented this and that to me is how you innovate. Um, I'm sorry, go ahead. Uh, you can say something, David, I apologize. No, no, no problem. Uh, yeah, so I, I think, you know, I, I think it's critical that, you know, putting out something is great as long as there's not an assumption that it will stick there forever. I think that's that's the key. It's, it's okay to come up with, hey, best effort currently, this will get you started. I, there's a whole bunch of things coming down the pike. I know a number of you already are aware of the number of things coming down the pike. Uh, so I'm expecting that there's going to need to be changes and that's okay. Um, mm -hmm. As long as there's an acknowledgement that there will be changes and that's okay. <laughs> And I think that's what Andre, maybe, and Andres, I don't want to paraphrase, but I think that's what Andres is looking for is like, okay, who's going to, who's going to like kind of not own that, but kind of administrate and governance as these things, you know, continue to happen, right? Totally agree. I think we do need that. Um, and it's just, you know, again, it's that catch 22 situation. It's like, to get something out there for us to iterate on and then to have governance on top of it, you need to have something there, right? So, well, is there any yeah. reason this group can't just work on V2 after V1 is out? I'm in if you all are maybe in. so it's it's really it's really just assessing for ourselves what do we want this to be and do we want to call it hey here's what we're working towards as an end goal or saying oh no this is just a time time and place brain dump of where our minds were at but that was it that's all it's ever going to be and we can we can aspire to to go to say like hey we're actually building something here's what we're going to start working towards this is the this is the initial crew uh we don't know if if any of us are here to stick like ride and die with the project because we might get our like life situations might change or job our employment might change for the time being we, we, the authors of this thing, want, want to start a project. We're working on this in this repository. Uh, we have a lot of clearance to say, hey, this is a cross-industry project. We have people from the OpenSSF who are part from this. We have people from CNCF. Uh, Tax Security was gracious to host uh, the production of the, of the architecture that informed the direction of this, this project. We can do all of that, but at one point we need to say what we're doing at the time that this this gets published and there's a link to the code. We have to call that code something. We have some room to the side, so take some time to think about it uh, and we can talk about it again next week, see what you're all leaning towards. Yep. And and just as a, a FYI, yeah, the. Uh, Brendan, myself, and some of the other folks are updating the code pretty heavily um, on an on an ongoing basis. Where, yeah, like even as a reminder, you know, like the code was more or less just some examples and some demos that just were all strung together. And now we have sort of baked it into a mechanism where we are sort of, you know, vendoring stuff. We're applying, you know, the the right sorts of uh, practices. We're sort of using sort of uh, like stuff like 
or we would like to start to adopt practices like the open SSF scorecard practices and, 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 and some of those things. And so um, we are doing also a lot of the, the, the cleanup uh, of, of the code on, on that front as well. It's shaping up. Yeah, yeah, and I think it's pretty. It, it's in a pretty reasonable spot where you know we have already uh, like an example like um, uh, uh, you know here's how you can sort of create uh, a you know uh, using build pack you can create a Docker you know or sorry it's just it's say a container image that has salsa attestations and yada yada. Um, we have a couple of sort of uh, examples uh, of of these sorts of things. Um, which I think is pretty cool. Uh, and, but once again, you know, uh, we also don't want to just make it, um, you know, the, the, at some point we, we do want to make sure that we have lots of, uh, different folks from different groups contributing back, providing input and so on. And, uh, another thing that, that is worthwhile to probably point out is, you know, there are some folks from some different companies who are outside, completely outside of this group who have started to ask questions about that repo and are wondering like, hey, what's what's the deal? How can I contribute? Is this something that I can just start to use? And I think we just need to um, be clear on, hey, what the state of it, what the state of it is, what the goal actually is going to be, you know, short, medium, long-term goals are, and then, um, yeah, how we can get other folks involved. I think that I would just add the having when people start getting involved, they're trying to know where they can, what they can get involved in and what the goals are and how they could help. So I think writing some of those goals down, maybe these are written down. What are the goals and requirements that we're trying to achieve? Um, like that for the end and where can people pick up and grab something for that particular element? Like for me, I'm more focused on the distribution and consumption angle. So I really wanted to understand like how could we plug into the creation components so that when they're distributed and consumed and validated that uh, there's enough there to have some validation around. So um, I, I think that helps understand where people can jump in and where they can fit in. Like, is there a, is there a requirement and a goal that is met and looks good? And somebody could say, well, I could snap to that. Or is there a goal and requirement that hasn't been met and somebody could come in like, well, I've got this thing that I think can solve this. How can I start testing that? that might we have help. some verbiage in the document. You, you know what I mean? You might want to take a look at that. And if it's something you want to iterate on, Steve, that would be awesome. Because again, you know, your expertise on this would be really cool to and be, be involved in this. So, yeah. Cool. Yeah. And, and on that front, I think one of the other um, things that I think is, is, um, one of the other things that we want to show off with a little bit of this, right, is, and I don't know um, exactly if, it, if it's going to fit directly into the project. I think it, it actually probably would fit directly into this project is, is those sort of thing like of uh, test cases of um, supply chain compromises and showing how this sort of thing protects against it. Because that's one of the things that um, as part of the demos we had given, uh, one of the things that we showed was like, Hey, here is what happens if there's a bad compiler, and here's how it would get caught. Here's you know here's what happens when you know the code uh, you know gets pulled from a place it wasn't supposed to be, you know, and here's how we would then uh, see that in this sort of um, project. And I think that that's another thing that we're we're really looking for because like at the end of it, right, we want to be able to say here's a whole set of example supply chain sorts of attacks, and here's how this thing would then um, you know, protect against it. Steve, you have your hand up still? Not anymore. No, sorry, I, I shut it down. Yeah, so I think we, we also want to want to ask ourselves, do we want this to be something that is used for educational purposes? People like take this for, for a walk and, and they learn those things? Or do they actually instantiate this thing as, as like the mini cube of a, the software factory? So based on my conversations with a few folks who had just sort of come across the project and started asking me questions about it, um, was it sounds like it's, it's a little of both, right? One is it's going to be a way of just hey, here's how you can sort of set this up, right? As something that you could just sort of deploy 
um, out there. It's not going to fit everybody's needs, but this plus the reference architecture plus the best practices document is sort of makes up sort of a, the equivalent of like the Kubernetes the hard way, right? You know, mm -hmm. it's like that's reference architecture. Sorry, not um, supply chain security the hard way is the docs we wrote. And then if you have a simple use case, you can sort of use this, but recognize that you're probably going to need to customize it a lot if you're going to deploy it to your own production repository, you know, your own production environment and you're a massive enterprise, right? Like this is not something right. like we, we, we are not going to make any guarantees that this is just, oh yeah, I, I run, you know, kubectl apply and a directory and, oh, I have everything and it, and it works perfectly. It's like, no, you know, if you have yeah. your own, I don't know, OIDC and you have your own whatever, you're going to have to customize it and you're going to need to really learn how these things work. But if you want to start poking around with it, if you're a smaller company and you just want to start testing stuff out, you know, yes, that's what, what I think it's going to be um, available for. And I think also to some extent, you know, we can provide the hooks where people can customize it to fit their needs, but making sure that folks recognize that, you know, depending on your individual use case, you might need to really dive into the code and customize it to, to what you need to do. But we will provide the mechanism to make it easy to do that, right? You know, the same thing with, you know, any of the any of the sort of CNCF tools, right? You know, they they a lot of them work out of the box, but you know, if you're there's a very you're gonna have, you're gonna run it and configure it completely differently depending on whether or not you're a multinational bank or you're just you know a startup with you know two engineers. Yeah, well, you're running this for three nodes. It's fun to use SQL Lite if you're running it for a million nodes. Like, hey, you probably want to run a, a cluster database behind this kind of thing. Cool. So we've heard a lot from, from the usual suspects and, and myself who takes up a lot of time talking. I'm curious to hear from like Marina, Priya, Faisal. What are your heads at? Like what, what input do you want to give into this? What do you think? or anything else you want to talk about for that matter. So I'll, I'll go first, right? Um, I mean, right now, I'm, uh, I'll am i give my comments, right? So, so I think the current landscape, if you look in terms of cloud native security, it's it's rapidly changing, right? I mean, uh, not, in, not only in the open source community, but we have a lot of vendors as well enterprise vendors who have come in this space and 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 the whole whole thing is kind of very fluctuate right i, I mean it's it's moving right there are a lot of moving pieces right now uh, what i am seeing right now from uh, from the open source community and also working with enterprise customers is that people are right now looking for recommendations right how to initiate uh, the whole how to secure the source um, how to secure the supply chain. So now the number one step is uh, people want to get educated, right? That, okay, what, what it means when somebody says that, okay, we are going to kind of secure the supply chain. And once you have educated them in, in a more methodical manner, then you have to kind of educate them that, okay, what are the tools available? What are the different options? And right now, when we are talking about traditional uh, systems, it's one thing, but for example, if you talk about containers, there are, I mean, there's Notary out there, there's Cosign out there. Uh, there is actually, if you look at Podman as well, there is, they have GPG key sign. I mean, I have particular interest in signing and verification, but but there are a lot of competition and a lot of moving pieces. So, So the number one thing from my angle is, I think, how can we educate people that, okay, what it means to secure uh, and then basically give them some examples that, okay, the methodology we have given, this is what you need to make, to make it accomplished, right? Uh, but as I said, right now, I am in this whole thing kind of, um, I, I'm in observation phase. I mean, like where things turn, right? Uh, because a lot of movement is happening. I was at KubeCon as well. Uh, um, so, so if you look at the vendor, what they are offering, a lot of competing ideas, a lot of things, a lot of discussion about policy management, but, but nobody has a clear idea. This, this, at least, this, is the, this is the thing that I got when I discussed things with other folks at KubeCon. 
and also I went, when I went to different vendors, people are exploring right now. Uh, yeah, so, so uh, not, nothing, probably nothing major to add right now, but yeah. Yeah, I guess one, one kind of comment note, you know, I don't know exactly what this is. So when we were right, initially writing the this the supply chain security um, document, and we, we really scoped it down to this kind of build process step of the supply chain. And while I think it's definitely important that we can create a proof of concept of that and write up the code so people can use it and reference it, I do worry a bit that if we shift the focus too much to that, um, we won't have a chance to go through and you know, talk about the other pieces of the supply chain that we haven't yet specified in, in this document. And um, I think as far as like a CNCF working group working on this, I think that's one of the places where we can have the most impact, right? Um, everybody has their code that they're running and that's all great. And there's lots of projects that are working on that. But I think that what this group can really do is kind of create, you know, overall standards and, and define best practices um, and so I want to make sure that we don't kind of lose track of that as we uh, move forward with this as well. So. so, so Mariana, what are the points that you think we missed in the first version of the white paper? Yeah, there was a whole out of scope section because we really we scoped it down directly to just the build system, this build factory piece of the supply chain. I think um, secure distribution is entirely missing from that as well as the stuff before the build, like um, securing your source code and um, all those other pieces. Um, I, yeah, and I think there's a list of that, I think, in the, the out of scope section of the doc, which I think is, is great for, a, you know, a, for focusing this document. But again, I think we should go back and address those pieces. Yeah, that's a really before good point. We do other, before we do other things, ideally, right? I mean, before at the same time, what you know, whatever. I, I'm not like yeah. I'm not saying we shouldn't do this other <laughs> stuff. <laughs> okay. As long as we get to it, good. Yeah, that's that's a cool, a, a really good call for focus with which we need, and like commit to delivering what we first set out to. Before we get too excited with the whole opportunity. <sighs> I mean, if you look at it from a press perspective, I'm kind of thinking it's like you get this document and said, "Look, this is something now that we've created. Create, we we've created a project on top of obviously a working group that's going to continue to iterate on this." I think that's actually a really good thing, so people understand that it's not just, "Hey, we're going to throw this doc over over the over the moat and you're on your own." So that's I think we need to do a little a little bit of that. So yeah, I hear I what you're saying is, is as long as we get back to it. And we should be, what Marina is saying is, we should probably recognize that, that we have these gaps there. I, I was try, trying to struggle with how, what was articulated there, because I thought I was hearing Marina say, let's make sure we're covering, you know, an end to end, you know, and for me, like, I, you know, I think about the distribution and consumption. Focus is good, but sometimes you kind of need to do that thin paint across the end end to you see if you really like the way this is being built. It, when we say call to focus, is the focus on the build side or is the, I guess I'm trying to get a sense of what you mean by focus. So we over rotated on the build side and there were other aspects we had called out when we first convened as a group and we did this breakout groups. And we, we have names for, for those categories that we didn't elaborate in as much. Let's let's move on to pre. Uh, uh, I think yeah, focus is super important. So Marina, one hundred one thousand percent. Yeah, I actually don't have too much to add here. I was kind of gonna make the same point that Marina made. Um, I think somebody was just asking me yesterday about um, like securing your version control system and like if that's mentioned in the doc. And I was like, oh, that's kind of like before what the doc talks about. But like definitely. An important piece of the supply chain. Um, yeah, nothing really big to add, kind of just a plus one to what she already said. Yeah, it's it, it's real quickly, I think it's it's also probably worth noting that you know there's a bunch of topics that we discussed in the best practices document. And then as we sort of narrowed the scope a little bit on the reference architecture, we sort of completely sort of said, hey, look, this it, it'll take too long to kind of um uh, you know talk about all the stuff around source code 
uh, source code securing and yada, yada. So we said, hey, that's not out of scope for at least for the V1 of the doc. Yep. So just uh, can I share the white paper and then just wanted to identify which section as well was it? Yeah, I may be looking at a different doc, I guess, I don't know. So just a sec. This is the white paper, right? You're talking about this section, non-goals? No, this is for the reference oh. architecture document. And I think that um, part of it is that basically the reference architecture covers a smaller scope than this exact document here. And so I think some of the stuff in here can be used as kind of a template for other topics we'd want to cover. Okay. Yeah. If you, if somebody can paste that link in the chat, it would be nice because when, when uh, there were a couple of questions raised about securing source code, right? I mean, that was the first topic that we tackled. I mean, at least th this is, this is my idea. Well, we, we, we tackled, we tackled it here, but we didn't give it as much coverage and the reference architecture. Okay. okay. Yeah. So the mapping, the mapping is if, if, the architecture should expand equally or maybe not equally, but should expand in all these areas that we call in this best practices. We're only really expanding on the best practices around building, but not, not the other parks. So we, we don't need, we don't need to try to get this done yeah. in, in seven minutes. I think everyone's taking the holiday today. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, let's face it. Yeah totally be good to to have a a mapping and writing of, of what's missing yeah yeah well and same on my point point if if you're missing something yes I, I think we should include that in the reference architecture i was just thinking about a different doc and now i'm looking at the the, the correct doc i would say <laughs> okay yeah yep Michael, anything else? No, no, uh, nothing really on my front outside of, you know, if anybody has any uh, thoughts or whatever about uh, some of that that code or whatever, um, all ears, feel free to, to open up issues. And as we're sort of going through uh, whatever it takes to, um, uh, as, as we mentioned, like if it, whether it becomes something official or not official, whatever, I'm definitely still interested in, in kind of getting folks thoughts on on that as well. Cool, and and on the the outstanding decisions on how we proceed, I'll I'll probably just uh, open a poll in the authors channel, uh, see which which way you guys are, are leaning towards, and none of these decisions are permanent. Like fortunately, we can we can move code around pretty easily. We can mirror repositories. We can reference one thing from one place to the other. If we built a GitHub page for a github.io page for tax security, we can we can put a link to the secure software factory org if we can get creative around it. So nothing is, is too permanent or deterministic, I guess. Nice chatting with you all. Hope you enjoy the holiday. If, if you're taking it, and if not, then yeah. hopefully your work day goes goes by fast. <laughs> yep. Later. Thank you.